Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning on what so far seems to be an okay weather-wise day, I think. Thank God the weatherman was wrong. Today is Ash Sunday, (laughs) thanks to Mother Nature, and so today we will be uh, celebrating and commemorating the start of the season of Lent. Uh, with the imposition of ashes and Holy Communion. Uh, Just one note, uh, we won't be passing the offering plate uh, today um, due to the way the service is set up. So the offering plates are at the back. If you didn't find them before, you can find them on your way out. Uh, A couple other announcements. Uh, First Communion class will be held at the end of this month on Saturday, March 25th at 10 a.m. here. Um, And this class is traditionally for fifth graders and their parents, but if you as a parent feel that your child is ready to receive the instruction and the elements, uh, you are more than welcome to join us. Um, And it won't be just an hour of dull book work and listening to me talk at you. It's going, uh, we are going to bake the communion bread that we will be using on Monday Thursday uh, as well as part of that experience. So um, the one thing we do ask is if you and your child uh, would like to participate in the class that you let us know in advance uh, um, so we know how much supplies and what to prepare for. Um, Also, Uh, If you see a consistent note in your bulletin under the prayer concerns, uh, we ask that if you or someone you know is in the hospital or in need of pastoral care to please let us know directly. Uh, Contrary to popular belief, uh, with HIPAA laws in place and stuff, hospitals aren't able to tell even pastors too much. Um, And and it may not be so here in Wishick, but in, um, in other towns, especially uh, Bismarck, Fargo, Jamestown, they're, uh, they're very limited as, as to what they can tell uh, clergy about church members. So it, it is uh, helpful to me and staff here at St. Luke's uh, to let us know directly about those things. And finally, I have a note here. Uh, that there will be no meals served by the Senior Center today or tomorrow. Are there any other announcements, corrections, additions? Then we will begin this worship at the beginning of the Lenten season with the reading of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. 
The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. At the time, I invite you to rise as you are comfortable as we sing hymn number 793, Be Thou My Vision, 793. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save when thou art. Thou my best thought, both by day and by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou and the shelter and thou my heart's God. Praise thou me heavenward, O power of my power. Riches I heed not, nor in empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only the first in my heart. Great God of heaven, my treasure thou art. Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty and ever living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Joel chapter 2. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him? a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast, 
Let the bridegroom leave his room, and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thank you. The second reading is from Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteous of God. As we work toward, together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says... At an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in the honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known as dying. And see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoice, rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father, who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. 
Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, Jesus Christ. The internet is full of awful people. That's what I think to myself. Whenever I see someone complaining about an otherwise fun movie, saying something reprehensible in the comment section of a news article, and seriously, I just automatically shut down when any political debates over Facebook comment section come up. That's no way to, to waste time. I think most of you can relate to this by hearing all the snickers in the background there. Like the debates that unfold on your Facebook wall between your aunt and that random person you met on a trip you took last winter, or the person that seems to post from their high horse about the amazing life and how, how hashtag blessed they are, such a, such a way that seems to put down others. The internet can be an awful place full of awful people. Here's the problem. We're those awful people. The internet is what it is because we use it the way we use it. And sometimes we as people just aren't that great. And the problem hasn't always been just the internet. That's been like the latest iteration of it, I think. We've just kind of always been awful to one another. And one way, shape, or form in human history, think of all the wars. Think of all the smear campaigns against each other. Or even something as simple as alienating a family member. I know of a colleague whose uncle divorced his aunt and so his grandmother put a piece of black electrical tape over his former aunt face in their family reunion picture on their dining room wall and kept it there like that. Or what about this? Have you ever taken a pen and scratched out someone's face in your high school yearbook because they were that they were that bully, they were so unkind to you, so you're like, oh, I think I'll just be unkind back to that person, because you hate them. Or have you ever shared rumors about someone in the coffee house that you knew weren't true, but you shared them anyway to outdo the other person? So I guess it's not just the internet that makes us awful people, huh? Okay, I'm not trying to bash every one of us, because this is including myself. Here's where I'm going with this. The uncomfortable realization that people, ourselves included, are sometimes just awful. That's what this time of year, that's what Lent is all about. I know that sounds very harsh, but in, in more formal terms, Lent is that period of 40 days, which we're now in the middle of, thanks to Mother Nature, it's that 40 days ahead of Easter set aside to solemnly prepare ourselves for Holy Week observance and eventually a celebration of Easter morning. It represents the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness of temptation in preparation for his own ministry. And Lent has begun with Ash Wednesday. This day focuses on our mortality when we remind each other from dust we came and to dust we shall return. The season, especially now, this invites all of you to look deep inside yourselves and to truly recognize your shortcomings and to use this time as a time of repentance, a time of renewal before one of the most, one of the highest holy days in our Christian tradition, and I'm of course talking about Easter Sunday. 
And today's text brings our awfulness to the surface. Not the texts themselves, but Jesus' warnings in them. In our Ash Wednesday Gospel, Jesus is warning us about how we conduct our lives, especially our spiritual lives, and especially in the presence of one another. What are we putting our energy towards? Jesus talks about the spiritual practices of of prayer, of giving, and of fasting. Those three things. And the reason it's those three things is back in Jesus' day, people were still awful, and those were, the, those were the biggest spiritual practices called upon by the synagogue. And obviously they didn't have the internet back then, but they had the city streets. So the temple officials took advantage of that. They were, there were many people who would be make an extra arrogant effort at making sure the general public could unmistakably see that they were being spiritual. Oh, look at me, I'm praying. Look at me, I'm giving money. Look at at me, look at me, look at me. They would pray loudly for people to hear them within earshot. They would sound the alarm whenever they would give a certain amount of offering or alms and they would look extra dismal going as far as to disfigure themselves when they would fast to make it look like they were suffering. It was definitely a look at me, I wanted attention approach to their spirituality. Jesus is in fact warning us that our spiritual life, the praying, the giving, the fasting, among whatever spiritual practices you can think of, I have a book of over 300 of them, The way we do those things is between us and God and how we ourselves connect with God, no one else. It's no one else's problem or show of how we do those things, how we engage with God and Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus says that if we do those things for the sake of worldly reasons, for the sake of showing off, for the sake of proving a point, we are limited to worldly rewards. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. This reminder can be especially convicting. Given how accessible information is now and how public we can tend to be with a lot of information nowadays. It seems like nothing is done in secret anymore. We know exactly how much our friends are donating to what causes around their birthdays. We see their pictures on community service sites and we know what page they're on in their devotional books. And I'll admit it, I do like posting on Facebook or Snapchat about my joys, my griefs, my goals, and sometimes pictures of food if I'm in an exotic location. If you go back and look at my Israel photos, that's definitely true. And as a religious person, as a religious leader myself, it only feels natural to include some religion and spirituality in online reflections now and again. So with all of that being said, what are we to do with Jesus' warnings to not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others? Are we hypocrites if we post on Facebook or Snapchat about our prayer, our fast, our giving, our practices, our spirituality? Quite the dilemma that Jesus is putting us up against, isn't it? The truth is, this kind of dilemma accompanies almost every interaction Jesus has with God's people in the Gospels, everything he teaches. Did Jesus really want us to turn the other cheek in a fight, say, 
hey, you punched me on this side of the face, now punch me on this side of the face. Did he really want us to sell every single possession we own? Does he really want us to keep our spirituality to ourselves? Jesus isn't necessarily talking about these things in the sense that we should actually do these earthly things in the physical sense, in the literal sense. Jesus is directing our hearts in the right direction. And admittedly, he's being a little more abrasive about it. Jesus is trying to bring out the good in each and every one of you. Because the bottom line is, is that we are mortal beings. We have an expiration date. And it is only through the gift of the grace given to each of you through Jesus on the cross that we truly connect and engage with God and Jesus Christ. All the rest of it is expendable. You are dust. And to dust you shall return. So what are we to do this Lent? If we use the time to rededicate ourselves to spiritual disciplines, get back on the straight and narrow, so to speak, do we have to hide it to reap the rewards? We may be tempted to water down just how high the demands of our faith are. Scoot them to the side for the sake of humility. But let's not do that. However, this Lent season, Jesus calls us to truly examine each and every one of our hearts as the beloved children of God. What does your faith ask of you? Not how does your faith make you feel better, but what does your faith and your faith journey ask of you when you think about your life in Christ Jesus? And truthfully, that could include interacting on the internet and not being an awful person. Because contrary to popular belief, that is possible. Just throwing that out there. The internet can bring out our worst, for sure. But perhaps we can use it to bring out our best as well. To show each other the love of our hearts in spite of our mortality. And this counts for on and off the internet. You don't have to be on the internet to, to show love to other people. That's not the point here. When it comes down to it, when it comes down to the brass tacks, we are dust, and to dust we shall return. And through Jesus you are loved, and to love you shall return. So don't be awful about it. Amen. One Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, 
one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, the many, throughout the earth, we are one body. As you're comfortable, I invite you to rise as we continue our worship with the invitation to Lent and confession. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, the envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, 
and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. We now enter into a time of the imposition of ashes. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And at, and at this time you may be seated and, and you may come forward to receive an ashen cross on your forehead as a reminder of you are dust. And to dust you shall return. Our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Please rise as we enter into the prayers of the people. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. O Lord our God, you gather your church and call us to return to you. Accompany us throughout our Lenten pilgrimage. Create in us clean hearts and renew all the baptized to declare your praise. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your creation, O God. Bring rains to parched places and heal lands affected by our changing climate and world. The, uh, let all inhabitants of the earth experience your abundance. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew the nations, O God. Give voice to those on the margins and resolve to world leaders who seek to protect those most vulnerable. Loosen the bonds of, of oppression and bring an end to all violence and persecution. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your people, O God. Respond to those who cry out to you in secret or seclusion. Equip us with compassion to care for those experiencing homelessness food insecurity, economic hardship and illness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew this congregation, O God. Inspire our faith formation ministries and those who teach and lead. Invigorate us with lifelong curiosity and wonder as we grow as your disciples. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O Lord, our God, we give thanks for all the faithful ones of every time and place. Renew us by the example of their lives of prayer and service. And at last, bring us with them into your everlasting presence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting. And your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. And praise to you for the Spirit poured out on all the nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let us remember that this is not my table. This is not your table. This is not St. Luke's table. This is truly Christ's table. And all who believe that Jesus Christ's uh, body and blood is in, with, and under the bread and wine for the forgiveness of sins are welcome to partake in this meal. All is now ready. You may be seated. As you are comfortable, please rise. Now may the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Um, receive the blessing. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to which is good. Render to one, no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just one quick announcement to the confirmation students. Uh, Today was Ash Wednesday for your booklet, so you can fill that out accordingly. And uh, we close with our closing hymn, Just a Closer Walk with Thee.
few quick announcements. Um, no Sunday school today, and it's really icy right out front here, so be careful on your way home. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.